the battlefields of the Civil War ravished the lives of hundreds of thousands of American soldiers. As the war ended and Americans grappled with the loss of their loved ones, they could not help but to ponder deep questions about the afterlife and the hereafter. What happens when we die? Is there a soul which carries on to another world? And if so, can the living ever be able to make contact with the other side. The spiritualist movement of the mid-19th century would seek definitive answers to all these questions. The spiritualist movement of the 19th century began in upstate New York in 1848 when the Fox sisters garnered national attention by making claims of communicating with the spirit of a murdered man. Through the 1850s and into the Civil War era, other spirit communicators, such as Cora Scott and Andrew Jackson Davis, gained popularity. These mediums would travel the country, captivating audiences with their omniscient knowledge of the other side. Some lectures brought these mediums to Terre Haute where they caught the attention of an eccentric doctor named Alan Pence. Pence had started his local practice in 1844. Injured gravely at a young age, he had a lifelong fascination with understanding physical ailments and caring for the sick. Pence also knew what it was to lose loved ones when his two infant children and wife were taken by a cholera outbreak. Careworn from his life, Pence took up an intense interest in spiritualism. And so it was in 1867, in this quiet, unassuming building, Dr. Alan Pence started the First Spiritualist Society of Terre Haute. Here at 2nd and Ohio Street, Pence explored the possibility of contacting the dead. As a well-educated man with a plethora of personal books on the occult, Pence had the means to turn his apothecary and office into a space for paranormal experimentation. In a dark space adjacent to his office, a makeshift room was designed for the sole purpose of inviting spirit mediums to conduct seances. Medium after medium was invited to Pence Hall, and as time went on, Terre Haute became a hub for spiritualism in the Midwest. 
audience members were invited to Pence Hall and seated in a darkened room with a violinist playing in the corner for audience. The seances, led by a medium, featured manifestations of spirits, including knocks, mysterious voices, and even apparitions. In 1873, a medium named Anna Stewart moved to Terre Haute with her family, and her fate and that of Dr. Pence were joined. On a whim, she decided to perform a seance for the Spiritualist Society. Her remarkable abilities for contacting the dead coupled with the awesome spectacle of her shows, made Anna an instant success. Dr. Pence was so impressed, he offered her family free lodging at Pence Hall in exchange for continuing her seances. Apparently gifted with psychic abilities from an early age, Anna Stewart mesmerized audiences. She dabbled in spirit photography, once materializing an image of the Virgin Mary. She communicated with deceased presidents, once calling forth George Washington, who churned out a patriotic tune. And though she was illiterate, she performed sessions with spirit writing, scrawling out ghostly messages on a chalkboard. Dr. Pence sincerely believed mediums possessed a genuine ability to show the world how the veil between the living and the dead could be uncovered. But many mediums were only seeking fame and fortune, a day in the spotlight. Anna Stewart's and other mediums' performances began to draw suspicions from staunch skeptics, whose criticism eventually brought down the popularity of the spiritualist movement and Pence Hall. Knowing the movement would never gain traction as he'd hoped, Dr. Pence carried out the rest of his days heartbroken and distraught. Too old to care that he was defeated, Dr. Pence passed away in January 1908. And perhaps his soul on the other side still patiently awaits to be contacted by a medium waiting for that thin veil to be lifted once more.